Hey folks, here at OSMVTXReviews.com, and you're watching our video review of the ASUS EEEPC 900HA. Now, this is actually not the 900HA that one can purchase from Target or Best Buy or here in the States on Amazon.com. This is the international version. You can pick this up at um, perhaps in China, perhaps in Japan, um, in Korea. And I say that because here in the States, we have the 900HA, the same laptop, the same internals, the same uh, one gigabytes of uh, RAM and the same 160 gigabyte hard drive, um, the same operating system, but the colors are different. Here in the States, we have piano black or glossy white. This version comes in sparkling champagne gold. Now it's quite eye-catching and yes, it's uh, pretty interesting to look at, but unfortunately it's not part of the kind of design language or culture of the States. Um, but again, it's pretty interesting. Everything else is the same. Now this netbook here has an 8.9 inch TFT LCD display. It has a touchpad that supports multi-touch. It has um, a a HD webcam capable of 720p HD video. It has an Intel Atom 1.66 GHz processor and again 1 GB of RAM. Um, otherwise, pretty generic in terms of lap, in terms of netbook performance. It, it's going to run you about $200 plus or minus, which is about the same ballpark as mid-end netbooks these days. Of course, as tablets become more and more popular, the era of netbooks is slowly declining, um, but there is still a demand for that because it runs on a Windows operating system instead of an Android one, and also the fact that it has uh, you know, a bit more battery life and some more powerful performance. It also comes with this nice, the international version comes with nice soft touch material felt case, which is a nice touch. And it comes with this pretty portable charger. I mean, it's very, very small compared to kind of a cell phone here. So it's easy to carry around with you. It comes in this nice, nice coloring. It also has a LED indicator to tell you when it's charging and the cable is of a nice length. Taking a look at the lap, uh, netbook's design, on the top here, we have access to a power on and off switch, which can only be accessed when the, when the netbook is open. On the left hand side, there's a silver chrome ring, an ethernet port, a USB 2.0 port, a microphone port and an external 3.5 millimeter headphone set jack port. The uh, front side of the product doesn't feature anything, whereas the right-hand side of the unit features an external SD card reader, which is nice. There's also two additional USB 2.0 ports, a external VGA port, um, and also a Kingsington lock. Now, of course, since this product is actually running on Windows XP, this is uh, a netbook that came out about two years ago, although it's still pretty popular. It doesn't have an HDMI you know, output, and also, of course, um, it runs on an older version of Windows. Um, however, the battery life is still pretty decent, and it's on the back. It protrudes slightly, but not too badly, and the bottom here also features the charging port. And it's a pretty well-built uh, device. It's made out of plastic, but has a nice construction quality out of it, and the international version here feels like it's going to last quite a long time. And of course, we can charge the device up, and a full charge will run about 4 hours to 6 hours, depending on usage, and that's quite a long time for a Windows XP machine. Um, in terms of uh, wireless options, this device has Wi-Fi. Um, some models also supported uh, Bluetooth, although not all models did, and there actually isn't a GPS version or a variant available. So it's quite easy to actually use um, and get, get situated, and uh, pretty nice design overall. Lifting over the front cover, we have access again to the keyboard inside, which, like most netbook keyboards, uh, is pretty small and a little bit cramped for proper typing, but again, it is better than, I guess, on an Android keyboard. It's better than a virtual one. Um, it's pretty tactile and responsive. It's just, again, on the smaller side of the spectrum. There are some special uh, Windows key icons on the top here, a dedicated role for wireless options and for screen options. And uh, the interesting thing here, of course, this is an international version, so as you can see, it's not going to be in full English. There's some characters on here uh, in traditional Chinese, um, as you can see there. Otherwise, if we clear some of the original stuff off of the way, we see that up here we also have access to the aforementioned power on and off switch. This is the 9-inch screen or a 9-inch um, TFT display, which is uh, pretty nice and uh, you know, it's a decent size, mid-end size screen for a netbook. And on the very top, there's the aforementioned uh, HD webcam that can capture pretty decent uh, images and video for Skype calling. And there's also an LED indicator that's telling you when it's powered on. And in addition to that, there's also going to be a webcam on the side. Now you can hear the speaker coming into play here. It's actually full surround sound. It has dual speakers on here, but the speakers are not directly visible. They're just taking up part of the ventilation holes on the sides, which is kind of interesting. Um, but it's actually a very good performance in terms of speaker quality for a netbook, which is pretty impressive. So after getting logged in, we can see it's basically the entire interface that we're used to as far as Windows is considered. Um, and down below here we have access to the touchpad, uh, which offers these traditional left hands, uh, left click and right click buttons. Um, and they're marked in Chrome, they are fingerprint magnets, but it's pretty tactile and easy to use and easy to press. 
The touchpad itself is actually pretty large for a netbook. Um, it's not too terribly large, but it's about 2.8 inches diagonally, and that's more than usable. And as you can see here, it, there is the continuation of the entire sparkling gold theme, and it extenuates into the keyboard, which is kind of interesting. Now, traditional uh, Windows XP uh, boot screen here is, as you can see, pretty normal and it's pretty standard. Nothing too fancy going on here at all. Um, the screen itself is very bright, offers very good viewing angles. It's glossy, so it's a little bit difficult to see under darker or under uh, under the bright sun or in uh, direct sunlight environments. But under the darker environments, it's still very easy to see. It offers pretty good viewing angles as well. As you can see here, the traditional uh, ho uh, screen uh, home screen is booted up into Windows XP. Again, it's not Windows 7 or Windows um, 8, so you don't have as much flashy animations, although all the uh, most current applications and all the stuff that you really need has been installed here. So for example, there is going to be Windows uh, Internet Explorer, um, there's going to be a camera application for the built-in webcam here uh, that takes actually pretty decent images, again, in video. There's also some uh, quick shortcuts to some, uh, you know, uh, sites that we no longer use here in the States, um, some specialty sites like uh, Cena.com and the such, and there's going to be a Skype application installed and a Google Chrome application installed. And down on the right hand side, left hand side, we have the quick start guide uh, bar, which after pressing will take you through the different uh, menus, different programs. And on the right hand side, we have access to the wireless information like the Wi Fi, like the keyboard, if you're transferring between Chinese and English, uh, your USB modes, and the such, and your time, of course, on the right hand corner. So pretty intuitive. Now, using a netbook on a nine point on a nine inch screen for me is still a little bit small. This is why I personally prefer using an ultra portable because an ultra portable doesn't mean it has to be only 8.9 inches. It means that it has to be thin enough, it has to be light enough, which this device certainly is, but the screen can be, you know, 13 inches or something like that, which I find to be a lot more comfortable when using to browse the web than on a 9-inch screen. Still, performance on this is actually fairly good. You can hear that there is a slight f fan sound to it, but it's not bad at all, and overall it's a pretty quiet experience for a netbook. Um, and again, it can lo load Google Chrome quite easily, and of course, uh, it can run YouTube videos, you can browse the web, you can play some very light games. It's not going to do well under you know, really heavy GPU and CPU performance games. But if you handle some light stuff, it still should run pretty properly. Um, and after that, battery life is pretty decent. It's what you might expect from an Intel Atom uh, powered device. Um, you can check your email certainly and uh, everything like that will do fine. EPC by ASUS has also uh, ASUS has also kindly installed uh, a suite of Microsoft uh, applications like Microsoft Office. There's going to be Microsoft uh, PowerPoint and also Microsoft Power, Microsoft Excel as trial versions uh, on the device, which is kind of nice um, of you know them to do. And you can see here we are in Chrome and it works pretty well. So if we wanted to even go to YouTube, we just click on that. Uh, we're kind of in a long range from the Wi-Fi router right now, so that's why it's a little bit sluggish to perform. But uh, it, it usually performs quite well if we're a little bit closer to the router here in the labs. Um, but overall, it definitely works as advertised. It's a pretty nice design to it, um, and we are kind of fans, again, of the, of the look of this thing, even though it's a little bit bizarre. Um, but there you go. It, of course, uh, doesn't have an uh, optical drive or a DVD drive, uh, just because, you know, it doesn't offer that the size to do that, but as you can see here, you do have that aforementioned PowerPoint on the side here. There is a iTunes installed on here as well. There is Microsoft Word uh, that works pretty well, um, and all those applications you might expect. So it's a more traditional laptop or a netbook than a more modern one, like on Windows 8, but uh, it works quite well, nevertheless. So as you can see here, you can browse the web. YouTube is loading here in the background. Um, again, it's pretty spotty in terms of Wi-Fi connection right now because uh, we're such a good distance away from the router, but it usually works fairly well. Um, again, the keyboard I still think is a little bit cramped. I really enjoy typing on a larger keyboard than on a smaller one, but again, it is what it is, and it does work, so, you know, better than nothing, I suppose, but not the best. We're going to test lo loading up New York Times and see if it works, and we're going to press on that. You can see that YouTube has fully loaded, so we can actually browse through the different ads. Flash, of course, is supported. Again, sound quality is actually pretty good, so you can definitely watch your videos, and uh, it still sounds pretty good. And streaming video is not the fastest, but it still plays without a problem. And then the same thing can be said about Hulu and other online videos that you might want to go into. Um, this is New York Times. As you can see, its speeds are pretty respectable, and it's pretty fast as well for a netbook um, of this caliber. So one gigabyte of RAM will definitely power you through these things. Just don't expect too good 
performance uh, or extraordinary performance and he sh still should be fine. Um, and you can see that it works definitely as advertised and uh, I could, you know, kind of scroll up and down just by using the touchpad and it's pretty responsive uh, overall to use. So overall, I would say that the uh, Asus EEP C900HA, it isn't the most powerful netbook in the world, but it does everything, and it does everything pretty well. Um, it has a pretty nice design to it, a very interesting look. It has a pretty good screen to it, very good speakers. It can watch videos. It can't play you know, graphically intense games, but it can browse pretty complex sites like the New York Times without stuttering uh, or slowing down. It can watch videos on YouTube. You can check your email. You can do word processing, and all those basic functionalities will work just fine. You can even use iTunes on this device and Skype calls. So it's a pretty good value if you're looking for a basic budget netbook um, for a pretty low price tag and again a very very interesting design and look to it. Then I think that this model will appeal to you. Um, but if you're looking for powerful performance, if you're looking for a larger screen, a better keyboard, there are better options out there in 2014 and 2015 standards. Thanks for watching this video review here at osmvtxreviews.com. This has been the international version version of the ASUS EEPC 900HA, the champagne sparkly gold version. Thanks for watching.